Hey guys, it's Tori and today I'm starting off a vlog for my three-day weekend because of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I do have a three-day weekend ahead of me and I really needed it. My plans are really just to read. I want to get myself back into physically reading. I'd like to finish a couple of physical reads this weekend if possible and just kind of get the refocus I need for the year. I haven't really been able to fully refocus on the new year. I feel like I just have been too busy busy to really give myself that opportunity. So I wanted to take advantage of this three-day weekend. It's also, this is the first video I'm filming um, since the announced loss of Jennifer Brooks, which I have made posts about on here and on Instagram. Um, I'm going to try my hardest not to cry talking about this, but Jennifer Brooks was a good friend of mine on booktube. She was actually my role model. I really looked up to her and loved her recommendations, her review style. I loved just her passion for books. She wasn't afraid to just say what she loved and I just really admire that. She embraced her wide variety of passions and I really respected that a lot as well. And I just, it's been a shock for me, like most people on booktube, and I've definitely, I mentioned in my post on YouTube that I have wept multiple times, and it's kind of a situation where I have times where I don't feel like I need to cry about it, like even if I'm thinking about it, and then there will be something that happens or I'll get in just the right mood and I'll end up getting emotional again about it. If you didn't know, I hosted Ancients of Thon with her for three three years in a row. I believe this last year was kind of a slower and quieter version of it, but we did work together on that. It was my idea and the first person I thought of to help me host was Jennifer Brooks and she did a great job and it was really wonderful to have conversations about it with her and just discuss different things. The channels Dostoevsky in Space and Beautiful and Minutia are working together to create a Jennifer Brooks, Brooks centered readathon. So if you're not subscribed to either of them, definitely check them out. I've just gotten an announcement on Instagram from Beautiful Minutia about it. So I don't know when it will be, Hope, I'm assuming soon. In fact, the announcements may have gone up already by the time you're seeing this video. And if they have, I will try to remember to link them down below. But I'm really heartbroken by this loss. There's so many books on my shelves that were inspired by her, recommended by her, and I actually ended up editing my favorites of the year for 2023 after hearing the news and it was crazy how many books just on that list were recommended or inspired by her. There were more than one, I will say that, that were on there that were read because of her recommendation in some way. And so I, yeah, it was, it was kind of a surreal experience thinking about all these books that were on that list that were inspired by her and she's not here to hear my thoughts about them. Anyway, that all to say, I am still grieving and there may be some moments in this video where I get emotional just depending on what happens. So let me explain a little bit more about what I'll be reading in this video. So first of all, I have The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty, which was inspired by Jennifer Brooks as well. She really loved this towards the beginning of the last year. I haven't seen her favorites of 2023 video yet. There's a few videos by her I haven't seen and I had to make a new playlist for them because because I knew if it, they were just in my watch later and came up, I might get emotional. And sometimes I listen to it at work and I was like, I don't want to burst into tears at work again. Anyway, so I have not seen the favorites video, but I wouldn't be surprised if this might be on there. I know she really liked it. So I do want to finish this. I have about 300-ish, a little over 300 pages left. And this is going to be my main goal. However, like I said, I would like to try to get through as much as possible in these three days. So I have this cute little jar, just one more chapter that's full of all of the books I have on my physical TBR. I guess I should say non-classic fiction books that are less than 350 pages. I think there's one that's like 352 that I was like, eh, I'll just add it in. But overall, they're going to be less than 350 pages, which is kind of on the lower end of my average. So just lower end of my average or shorter is what I'm going for with these. Yes, that's my plan to get through as many books as possible this weekend, primarily getting Amina El Sarafi done so it's just done. It's been 
probably over a month since I started reading it or like three weeks at least and I have not finished it and I just need to get through it. So that's my goal. I have actually finished two books this year though on audiobooks. Both were rereads so it wasn't really working towards my goal of getting my physical TBR done but I'm enjoying myself and I've needed to get myself back into the desire to read and I definitely think it's helping. So currently the book I'm listening to on audiobook that I may listen to some of while like doing chores and stuff. I plan to do some laundry and some clean up around my apartment. It won't be a lot. It will probably be Monday that I do it. But while I'm doing those things, I may end up listening to my audiobook, which currently I am listening to The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. So that's what I've been listening through. I listened to The Final Empire and then I finished The Well of Ascension yesterday. Actually, I got it right here. And now I'm on to the Hero of Ages, which I've just barely started. And I'm loving my time with this. I'm really nervous about finishing this because, first of all, I'll be sad when it's done because I'm just loving my time with these characters. But also I remember how this ends and I don't know if I'm ready to face that. I, yeah. I just really love these books and I had forgotten how much I enjoy myself when reading Brandon Sanderson. I feel like I say that every time I read Brandon Sanderson but genuinely I just I spread it out enough that I like get back into it and I'm like oh yeah no like these are actually so good. So anyway I will see how much I get listened to of this. It probably won't be a lot but I probably will listen to some. So for now I'm going to work on the adventures of Amina al Sarafi this morning. I do need to eat something because I'm pretty pretty starving. I also want to do at least part of my laundry today because I there's a few things I need over the next couple of days that need to be washed. So I'll do at least some laundry today, the rest on Monday. And then like I said, a few other cleaning things, but mostly I will be focused on getting through as many books as possible. So there's my intro. So I am going to get into reading and welcome to the vlog. <laughs> The Adventures of Amina El Sarafi and final thoughts I just barely finished it so this is just kind of like immediate impressions but I did enjoy it it's not necessarily a favorite I don't think it's going to be like a favorite of the year or anything for me but it was a great piratey adventure and so I feel like I'm probably going to give it four stars because while it wasn't like an amazing book it did what it set out to do very very well I don't have any real issues with it to be honest I I think Amina El Sarafi was a really compelling main character and I actually hope that Shannon Chakraborty ends up writing more about her. There's definitely room for her to continue writing stories about Amina El Sarafi and I think that would be really interesting but I also would understand if she decided not to. It definitely gave Pirates of the Caribbean vibes although there was a little bit more magic involved than I think there is in Pirates of the Caribbean. I guess maybe it kind of leans more into the later Pirates of the Caribbean films where there's a lot more magic involved. It also had some aspects that actually reminded me of Moana, just like this kind of world of monsters and things like that really reminded me of, Mo of Moana, which was really interesting. It definitely was a bit of a slower burn story. Like the first half was definitely pretty slow and I was like, okay, where are we? I mean, I knew where we were going, like what the intention was with the plot, but I didn't really understand what it was going to end up doing, which which in some ways is a good thing, but it did make it feel a little bit more slow as I read it. That didn't hinder my enjoyment because I really don't mind a slow burn story, but other people may not like to read stories like that. So I did want to mention it, but yeah, I guess overall, I don't really have a lot to say. I enjoyed myself. I think it was perfect for what it was trying to be. And I would be willing to continue if she ends up writing more in this series, I'd be willing to continue with those. And I do really want to read her other series. I already wanted to read it but now I know that I like her style her storytelling style and I know my mom really liked that other series as well I think it's the Deva Bad trilogy is what it's called so I think at some point I will try to reach for those I don't know when that will be but I definitely have them on my solidly on my list after reading this 
It is 10 o'clock at night, a little after 10, and I, while I'm not super tired, I think I need a break from reading the rest of the night. So I think I'm not going to be reading any more until tomorrow, but I do want to pick my next read so I at least know what to expect. So I have my little mug here and we're going to choose one of these books to read. Okay, let's see, we'll go with this one. And it is The Silence of the Girls by, I think it's by Pat Barker. So that is a Greek myth retelling, which actually is really good. That's one that I, I've been wanting to read, a Greek myth retelling that's been kind of on my radar. So that will be perfect. And I don't believe it's very long at all. I mean, none of these are going to be that long, obviously, but I think this one is more in the middle of the range I gave myself to include in this jar. So that will be great. And I will check back in with you once I've started that and have a few thoughts to share. of the girls by pat barker it is the end of monday of my three-day weekend so unfortunately this is probably the last thing i will finish in this vlog but i did want to share my thoughts on it i really ended up enjoying this it's not my favorite greek myth retelling that i've ever read or even i don't know it, no it's probably not in like the top five or anything but i did enjoy myself with it i really have wanted a story focused on briseis and that's what this was so i did really appreciate the more fully expounded experience of her story. I did kind of feel like this book treated her as a little bit of a stand-in for all of the women experiencing what she's experiencing and so I didn't feel like I got a lot of her personality like she just felt like a very basic main character kind of an individual and it mostly felt like it was exploring the pain and suffering of the struggles that she goes through as a prize one after a battle as basically a sex slave so I will say a lot of trigger warnings for sexual assault, rape, sexual content in general, brutal death, like there's a lot of really kind of disgusting things in here for sure. So just be aware of that if you are interested in reading this. But it was a well written book and definitely an interesting take on some things. However, I will say it did feel a lot like a lot of other Greek myth retellings that I've read. It didn't really stand out very well at all, which I know this was kind of one of the earlier ones of this era of Greek myth retellings. So I did want to keep that in mind reading this. However, it just, yeah, it didn't really stand out until actually the second half. In the second half, we started getting some input from not only her, but we also had some some chapters, I mean, that were third person but more from the perspective of Achilles and Patroclus which was just really really interesting. This primarily was told first person from Briseis's perspective but then we had those couple third person chapters and it just added a new dynamic to the story because obviously she's looking particularly at Achilles as the enemy which he should be looked at that way by her it's understandable but the third person chapters kind of gave him a little bit more humanity, a little bit more of a well-roundedness, which I really was impressed with. Like by the end, you definitely weren't supposed to like him. I want to be clear about that. It wasn't like a, oh, maybe he's not so bad. It was more of a understanding that he was a man who was suffering grief and his own pain, but a lot of it was self-caused. And he also was doing these very brutal things and you don't expect Briseis to like him, but there is th also this kind of weird twisted relationship between slave and owner a little bit particularly when sex is involved and like what that means for both sides and I don't know it was just a very interesting book that did not diminish any of the terrible things that were happening by being like but actually maybe it wasn't like there was like a weird romance or anything in this it was just kind of a woman trying to make the best of her situation by the end. A very unfair and terrible situation but just the situation she's in nonetheless and she's like I'm going to 
take control of my life as best I can. And I just, I really liked it. So I ended up really liking that aspect of it. I felt like it was almost going to be a three star read, but that ending really, or like, I guess it was like the next two thirds. It was, it was split into three parts and parts two and three both had some of those aspects. And so those last two thirds, I really just enjoyed a lot. I ended up giving it 4.25 on Storygraph, so a higher four star basically. And I'm so glad I finally got to this. This one has been on my list for so long and it was about time I finally read it, so I'm glad I was able to do that mostly today. There is a sequel to this that I think I might get my hands on and try to read. It's I'm, I read the synopsis for it and it seems interesting. I'm, I'm very curious to see what Pat Barker does with it because it's kind of exploring a bit of time after the Trojan War ends and after this book ends that I don't know really much at all about and so that I haven't read anything particularly about. Most of the books I've read about the Trojan War tend to end the same point this one does. So I'm very curious to see how that one goes. I don't think I would read it for a while so I probably will wait a while before I get it but I am interested in reading that. If you've read it I believe it's called The Women of Troy and liked it or even if you didn't I guess just let me know if you've read it and what your thoughts were on it compared to this one like how necessary is it did you feel like it added much? Do you feel like it was a good book? I see it everywhere, so I assume it probably ended up being pretty good, a pretty good sequel. But I guess I won't really know until I read it or get a little bit more input from other people. So anyway, all that to say, this was enjoyable. Not a favorite, like I said, but it's one that I'm glad I read and I probably would be willing to revisit it in the future. It just, I really like Trojan War retelling books so much. Like I, The Song of Achilles was one that I, I ended up getting rid of it and part of me wishes I didn't. At the time I was kind of like, I don't know if I'll ever reread this. I don't care, but I just feel like I've read enough books surrounding the same topic now between this and A Thousand Ships and then Song of Achilles that I'm like, man, I kind of wish I had them all around so I could kind of compare a little bit more. I also have The Daughters of Sparta, which also kind of explores a little bit. It's just slightly different characters it's following. Electra is another one that's kind of following around a similar idea, just again kind of opposite ends of people where people are and stuff because obviously Daughters of Sparta and Electra both follow more like Clytemnestra and then Helen of Troy and so we're a little more inside of Troy and also dealing with Cassandra a little bit and some of them and stuff so we're experiencing a lot of these stories just through different eyes of different women who are experiencing it. So they're different, but they're all kind of similar. They all give me very similar vibes because they're exploring a very specific storyline, a very specific legend. So anyway, I'm rambling now. Suffice it to say, this was a pretty good reading weekend. Obviously, I just finished the two books, but honestly, that's pretty good for how things have been going. I actually will have, that's four books that I finished this month, which is amazing compared to how I've been reading the past few months. I'm definitely pushing past that reading slump and I'm very excited and proud about it. I was going to pick um, a book out of this jar, but now I'm realizing that there's a possible readathon going on. I mentioned it at the beginning of this vlog actually that has to do with honoring Jennifer Brooks. And I think I'd rather focus on that than pick one of these, especially because I also have another book that I need to read by the end of the month. And I it's kind of a longer one, so I don't know if I want to challenge myself. So I'm sorry this mug only showed up once in this vlog when I said I was going to just use it throughout this weekend and just pick book after book. Clearly that did not happen, but I do intend to do this again at some point. I'm probably going to try to schedule a little long weekend for myself. I think there's actually one coming up later this month or next month that I'll be able to have. I can't remember when the next bank holiday is, but whenever it is, I'm going to use this again and I think I'll try to get myself to just do this instead of reading what I'm already currently reading and just put a pause on those things so I can spend the weekend just focused on getting a couple of these read. These, I think it will be nice to have a jar just full of my shorter books so that when I have time 
ones where I'm like, I don't know what to read, but I need something short, I can just use this. So you will see this again. I apologize that this vlog didn't quite go the way I hoped, but when do they? So anyway, that's it. That is my long weekend reading vlog. I was able to read, I think it would have ended up being like almost 700 pages this weekend, which is great. Both books actually had some pretty small and cramped font, so it's pretty solid that I was able to read that much while also doing a few other things with my days. Sunday I really didn't read hardly at all, so really it was within two days I read two books, which is pretty good. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you've read any of the books I've mentioned in this video, your thoughts on them, as I would love to know. I hope you are having a wonderful reading week, and I will see you next time. Bye!